starters, you know, we're all living in warmer climates than even today, therefore they need to have certain adaptations which can help them there. So that's kind of the first area I'll look at is their regulation of the temperature. So, of course, when they're outside the water, it is really, really warm. So they need to keep themselves nice and cool. Uh, one thing they actually do is blush. So blush is quite a useful adaptation and quite a lot of different species that we use. Uh, the penguins use it, the humans use it, um, and it's really, really useful. Basically what it is, is where we bring all our sort of our blood vessels to the surface, and then the air can get exposed to them, therefore take the bodies away. It's a really, really useful method to help pull these guys down when they're outside the water. You know, certain things that we help them when it's our heat of summer, we actually have sort of a, a sprinkler on them sometimes, and we've also got the shaded area by having trees and things like that there as well. When they're in the water, it's a completely different story. As I said at the start, it, they do swim in a cold water current, therefore they need to be able to keep themselves warm when they're in the water. If they had a layer of fat or blubber, like a seal would have, then they would overheat when they're outside the water, therefore, you know, it is one of those more interesting ones where they had to devise a new adaptation to help them there. What they've actually ended up with is a layer of air beneath their feathers. It's really, really useful actually. Uh, it creates a barrier between the water and their skin. And when you're wet, you actually lose around 30 times um, more heat than if you were dry. Therefore, by having this, it does actually help them stay much warmer and make them more efficient uh, when they're in the water as well. So next, you're going to look at their swimming ability. So they're actually really, really good divers. Um, you know, they can swim quite well as well, but diving is their sort of their main area. They can dive into the water at speeds up to 17 miles per hour. So of course that's quite fast for a penguin, which won't grow you know, higher than your hip height. And when they do jump into the water, you know, they're able to accelerate by using those big flippers and also their web to beat down them. They actually have to get to a, round, a depth of around 15 meters. This is where the small shoaling fish like sardines and anchovies, which they feed off, will live. Therefore, you know, they can have a certain adaptation to help them get down to there. Um, if you are unaware, penguins have actually evolved from birds. Birds have hollow bones to aid them to fly, because of course they're nice and hard, they're able to get up to those heights. Uh, but it does mean that for a penguin, when it first started out, it's quite a bad adaptation when they're diving down into the water, because the hollow bones would crack under the pressure, and of course that's not very good. Therefore, these penguins have actually evolved to have solid bones, which will enable them to get down to that depth without having the pressure of um, the bones cracking there, and it really does help them when they're, you know, obviously surviving there. The swimming will lead on to the sort of last area of adaptations that they need to survive, which is their hunting ability. So when you look at them as hunters, they're very good in the water, outside the water they're not. Uh, when you look at them outside the water, they stand out like a sore thumb due to their black and white coating. When they're in the water, it is actually a form of camouflage. So this distinctive colouring has um, you know, been created by them to help them when they're inside the water. So being a good hunter is two parts. Of course you need to be able to catch an animal, but you also need to evade capture yourself. So for these guys to have this camouflage, it really does help with that. The black of their back will actually blend in with the bottom of the seabed, when the white of their belly will blend in with the sun reflecting off the top of the water. A very, very useful adaptation there, which can you know, stop them from being killed by the, sort of, the sea lions and the animals that are around them trying to hunt them there. Um, it means they can keep an eye out for the fish when they can't see them, and then, of course, you know, keep an eye out for their predators when the predators can't see them either. Other things that can really, really help them with hunting are their eyes. They've actually got two sets of eyelids. One's a transparent layer, which will enable them to kind of look through in the water, and the others will blink. Um, and it's really, really useful because it means they keep their eyes open without the salt water, um, you know, hurting their eyes. Then. So it's really, really useful for them um, to be able to see, of course, what you're trying to hunt. Finally, inside their beak, once they've actually caught the animal, they don't want it to jump back out and away. So they've got edges that point back in towards their throat, which means the fish can go further in, but it can't get out. Um, once again, you wouldn't really be a happy penguin if you swam after an animal and then you know, lost it at the last hurdle. So it's definitely a really, really useful adaptation, and those adaptations will make this penguin you know, the animal that it is, and makes it you know, an efficient animal there. Unfortunately for the species though, um, you know, they haven't adapted to run away from humans. Humans will unfortunately create barriers that they can overcome. For instance, we overfish the fish that they eat in the areas where they live. You know, sardines and anchovies are quite well-known animals, you know, I'm sure most people do know them, uh, which is why we actually feed them a little fish called Sprat. So that's one little bit that can help to kind of help the species out there. And you can also help if you kind of reduce the amount of fish that you eat unsustainably and maybe move on to more sustainable options there.
you know you can pick up good fish guys which will tell you all about the sort of uh, the correct species of fish you should eat or the sort of more sustainable ones there also these guys at nests are very very fertile um, you know over where these guys live in Peru um, the farmers will often take them and put them on their crops to help them increase their crop yields of course it's great for the farmers they make a little bit more money but unfortunately for these guys it does mean that there are only around 4,000 native plant species left in the wild which of course is a huge amount and you know it's a great species at all there are some things that you know even we get involved with to try and help them out as well. So the penguins you see in front of you today are captive bred. So we have a captive breeding program at the moment. Um, it's really, really useful to try and to, you know increase the amount that are in captivity, you know, sort of around other sites. And due to the intelligence of the species, penguins can actually uh, put back into the wild uh, when they're trained to do so. With these ones, they are going to be kind of staying here, and then we'll be breeding them to try and you know, increase the amount that we do have. Uh, but it might be something you might look into in the future. If you do wonder which ones are which and what their names are, you come check out the Penguins Who's Who board just over here, which tells you their name, how to identify them, and also their partners and things like that, and their name as well, so also interesting information there. This is the conclusion of the Penguin Talker, the feed will be going on for the next couple of minutes, so if anyone does have any questions about the penguins or any other animals around the park, don't hesitate to give myself a shout once again, then it's gone more than happy to answer any good questions today. The next video presentation will be at half past 12 over in our ocean time, where you're going to see our green sea turtles get burned and also the shark species and the rays and the other ones that are in that tank there. So definitely come join me over there if you are interested in seeing those turtles fed. If not, before we do leave, there are a couple things available for you. If you yourself would like to ever get a feed, just like this lady down and girl, all you need to do is go speak to people at the front of the house and they'll be able to put them in to get a feed for some animals. Or if you would like to ever get adopted one of our animals, of course, they'll be taken home. You
Yeah. 